Now here's an ambitious picture folks. I've never tried anything quite like this before but you can see if I can pull it off it's going to be fantastic. This is a that's all of a ploughman around the middle of the last century, I mean, 1940s, 50s type of, that's the kind of basis I've got there, ploughing a field. And um, I'm going to have this in a mist, though it's a very, imagine a very early morning and they're up at the crack of dawn ploughing their field and the scarves on, so they're wrapped up well. This is the atmosphere that I'm trying to create and we've got a misty scene. So what I've already done, just to save a bit of time, I've already started putting in my mist, which is in fact uh, 270 folks. Now I was going, I was thinking about using 230 and I could have used that, but I wanted it to be slightly warmer. Okay, so I've used 270, which means 273, etc. as we go through the picture. Now what I'm planning to do here, let me just talk while I work. This is going to, I'm not sure quite what I'm going to do with the sky yet, whether I'm going to make it just mist like this, whether I'm going to put little touches of blue in there, just sort of thing as the, um, the misty sort of pattern at the top. But down here, this is where I want it to be misty. Now I've got that far. And my plan is to, let me just rub this in focus on this for the moment. This is all rubbed in well. As you can see the dust on there is quite prolific and that means I've got plenty on there which means any colours I put into that will be great. The same colour paper does have sort of some kind of influence on it. Now this is where we get interesting folks. What I'm going to do here first of all I'm going to bring the mist down but I'm going to cut, skirt round the horses for the time being and the plan is to have this recessing into the background. So that poor old chap here is going to be lost in the mist. You can see. Let's just move that across. I won't bother to go all the way around there, but what I'm going to do is go around and he is going to be also free of mist. Now it doesn't mean to say I'm not going to put any on there. I possibly will. But I, at the moment my plan is to have the man over here coming out of the mist and the horses too. Anyway, now I've, only, I've done that. I can carry on. I want to come, I want to bring this mist down to about here. Okay, just behind really the horses. Okay, so I'll get on with that and then I'll take you to the next level. But you can see our little man there. Now what I've made sure of and you will have on your reference picture is this little man will be quite strong in terms of the drawing itself but otherwise we lose him see he almost still he looks now doesn't he as though he's in the mist a bit um, and then we'll have some background area and again I'm not sure quite what I'm going to be doing yet but this is why it's quite exciting for you I know what I'm going to do these three and I'm going to do a ploughed field, or the, the, the field being ploughed rather, then it's going to recess back into here. Uh, so the, the only problem I can see is I'm going to have a whole load of nothing going on. So I plan to have a tree, maybe a shadow of a tree in the background here, and maybe something here, and then maybe I'll put a little bit of sky in. Otherwise, it will just be one blank um, misty scene. Okay, so let me let me continue with that, and then come back, and I will uh, I'll take you to the next level. But I've got to go in all of these yet, so it's going to be a bit tricky. Okay, there's all the mist on now. And what I've also done is I, although I haven't put the mist down here, I graded that into the background area. As I said, I'm not really sure how this is all going to work out. Um, but we'll see. So you can see the graduation. You can't actually see where the mist kind of leads. This is the sort of idea that I'm really looking for here. So it could work out very well. Um, what I'm, one small thing before I actually... I'm going to bring you closer when I do this. But one thing I've just seen here. 
Um, I don't mind that being quite strong, but I'm not so sure what I want it quite so strong at the back there because that's going to recess quite a long way back. So rather than I've rubbed that pencil line out there, I don't mind that one because it's at the same level as the man. So we'll be able to see that quite strong. That's I think I'm happier now with that. Okay. Now I'm going to bring you closer and we're going to start the man off now. This is going to be fascinating. What I'm planning to do is to use my colour shapers. Not quite sure which one yet, but I use the colour shapers and the grey to start with because what I want to do is to put on uh, a ground colour uh, for the men, the man. But I've got to blend him in because I can't have it as strong as this. Then once that's done, I'm going to be using some colours. Browns and greens are my favourite colours at the moment. The favourite colours are perhaps a green jacket with a brown uh, trouser and then um, perhaps a brown a brownish hat. Uh, so it's going to be very interesting to see. And then once I've done that, well, my plan is to put grey on top of it. So let's just see how it goes. Anyway, let's get let's get cracking and uh, come bring you close on this man. Now I'm going to start by putting his hat in. And you see how gentle I am, but where I've got the like, separation, I'm being just a little more forceful. But I just want it very, very light. Lovely. That's about it. Now what I'm also going to do, is I'm just going to use a little bit of the light grey on top of that, just to bring it down just a little bit more. So it's a combination of 273 and 179, but I, I think that looks nice. Now, what colour? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to give him an ochre hat, which is 182, so I'm going to put it in 182. I know that 182 and 273 go together very well. And let's see, see how that works out once again. Had that light touch. Whoops. Oh, I, think I, um, I think I'll use the colour shaper. It's very soft colour shaper. Now you can use the ivory colour shaper for this. But that's the kind of thing I'm looking for. What it needs though is just a touch more strength. So rather than use browns, I'm just going to use the grey just again. Now, I'm going to leave it at that for the moment because I think that that doesn't look too bad at all. Once we come back later on, we'll see. Now, it's just sort of coming out of the mist, you can see. And what, I, what I think I might be able to do here, too, is perhaps put a little bit of white on here and there to even suggest that the mist is having an effect on the edges. I like that. So that's something that I'm going to try. Now we're going to his face. Now his face is going to be, it's going to be dark. There's no way we're going to be looking at, at faces being strong and pink and so on. So I'm going to put 187 in here. And be, I'm thinking that he would be a very tanned farmer. Well, that looks good. And although I've got the eyes, nose, and that put in there. The really, um, I'm not going to show you in a minute how we're going to be doing that. I want a bit of shadow in there as well. Now I'm now going to use 283. Once again, you'll see, um, before I do that, let's just use, I'll use the ivory colour shader because we're not, not all of you are going to have that pointed one. Yes, you see, that works just as well. But it needs a little bit of shadow in it. And the other thing it needs is a little bit of hair. Now, so the shadow will be a little bit of 283 underneath the rim. Very, very tight. Not much room in here for to folks at all. And then we're at the bottom of his nose, under his nose, you've got to imagine where this is, folks, right? And then just a little bit of on his chin. You see how that works out? That looks pretty good to me. Um, I'll, I'll put that other colour shaper away because as I say you're not going to have this 
and that's very, 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 very light. And then, what we can do then is with our one seven, I'm going to be using one double seven, just indicate just the merest hint of eyes just beneath the cap and the bottom of his nose and maybe indicate a little mouth. The other thing we can do here is with this same colour we can put just a little bit of hair protruding from there. Now that I think is not bad but what we can also do now, this is quite clever, is we can also use a little bit of white just a touch to lighten up the nose and lighten up the cheeks and then on the top of the lip and in the chin. Now that is very clever because we, you see how big that is, that's my little finger. Now you may not be able to get it as small as that but as tight as that but if you can it will look great. And now I'm going to put just a little bit more brown on his cap. Like that. And then we can use a little bit of white. Always bring the white back, don't ever worry about the white. Fact, we've got the grey on. It just gives us that. I love that idea of it just being almost fading into the background there. So that looks good. Now that's really set the seal on what we're going to do here. Now I've got a scarf which I'm not quite sure what colour to use yet. So what I'll do is I'll work on the jacket first. Now the jacket, what we're going to do with this is we've got to really use our, our grey to outline that. And the idea behind this is that once we've got the outline we can fill that outline in with a lighter colour. But if we haven't got the outline in the first place, we're not going to be able to do it. I know you can say, well, you, you're sure you've got it with a pencil cob. I have, but uh, the pencil mark uh, needs to be subdued. Now, let me just do that. I won't do the whole thing. You know, just do this sleeve. You can see how it's all going to be put in. Now, here we've got a scarf around there. And that's the colour that I'm going to have to decide what to use in a minute. But I'm going to use a green jacket. But before we have green, we've got to have grey. Why is that? Well, because the green has got to be subdued. And if you use green on directly on there, it'll look too harsh. But by putting it on top of the grey, you get a grainy grey green. Are you with me? So let's do one, one section at a time. Don't do the whole thing. If you do, it won't work and use the colour shaper. Now you can see, can you see what I mean about that being faded? We can worry about, in fact we can worry about it. And another thing, once again, fade the edges of that slightly so that we get that sort of misty look again. It's what I like very much on this. So there we are. Now his hand. Same as the face, little hand that's going around this um, plough handle. And there's his thumb going back that and his hand going this way. Right, just a little bit of, uh, that was 187 and this is 283. 283 is a very good colour to work with 187, it needs to be a bit sharper than this folks. You get the shadow coming in, okay. What about the shadow for the dress, the um, dress, the, the coat? Well, we come with grey again. Now that is not quite strong enough. So what we use now is 175. Now 175 is a devastating colour if you use it really strong. But if you just use a very light touch of it, like I'm doing there, it will work out well. And that gives us then a little bit of shadow. And then, once again, the white can come in. This is the creases in the arm. Okay, and then we can use a white once again to pull it out. Okay, got the idea of that. Okay, now I'm going to work through the jacket because um, you don't want to keep seeing me do the same thing over and again. So the whole jacket will be done in the same way. Start off here with my separation. 
he's going to have his jacket done up. And there's a plough that goes through that, so what it might be a good idea to do is, is to take a little bit of that dust off. Yeah. It's not going to come. Oh well, uh, in that case I'll forget about it. Forget I've done that, folks. Rewind. I'll have to do that another way. Uh, yes, his, jack his jacket. So I'll do his jacket, and then we'll do his trousers. And I'll do that the same way. But it's going to take me a little while to do that. So when you come back, it'll all have the same look that that's got on that side. Now, I've brought you back in because I wanted to show you. I've, I've put brown on the trousers. And then I'm going to, oh, these are on the, tra be the trousers behind. But we're going to put trousers in the front. But there's a couple of things I wanted to point out to you. First of all, we're going to put the green, the other part of the green jacket on here, but I'm just putting a little touch of 175, just a very, very, just a hint almost there, before we put the jacket on. Now, the jacket now goes with, with grey, first of all. It goes down to there. Don't want to make this too thick. It's just enough just to put on so that when you put the green on, 174 on, that can go on a little lighter, a little, not quite so... You know, it's always a good idea to have some spare paper handy here. So you can just try this out before you actually put it on the picture. I haven't done that, but I think it's a good idea for you to think like that. Okay, now just make sure we've got a cleanish... Color shaper, sit there. That you know, really, really works well. <coughs> Remember, <coughs> excuse me, we've got the. Just blend that out a little bit. We can always lighten that if we have to at a later, later stage. Now, the white now comes in, putting a little bit of lapel on there. And then the light goes on here, the top of the shoulder. That's where the light would be hitting, the top of the shoulder. Leave a little gap, if you can, between those two. And then you bring that down. And then you do the, do marry the two together. Again, light, top of the shoulder. You want to keep a separation, if you can. What I've done here, I've got the separation, but I've, I've minimised it. And you come down to about there. Okay, and then... That's fine. I think that, that will do. Now what I'll do now is just put my the separation. Always use grey first. Grey in the centre. Then a little touch of green, because it's still a green jacket. 174. That gives us our separation there. And then just the merest hint of 175. And there you have it. You see we have a, a really nice uh, effect. And what I've got to do now is use my colour shaper. That's not what I was going to say there. Just to whittle it down once again so that we have a, a, a really nice contour to the jacket. Light up here, light in the lapel. It's good. The great thing about these is you can, you can redo them several times. Light down there. And then, as I've done on this side, just use the white just to make the jacket slightly appear to be in the mist. Now that looks good. Now the buttons, what I'm going to do with the buttons is I'm going to put in the buttons. Uh, okay, let's have a think about it. Put the one there. And I'm going to do this in 175. Three buttons we'll have in. And he's got all three done up. Okay, we'll just whittle that back just a little bit with green and then we can use then the colour shaper just to almost pat it out. It's rather, don't rub it particularly because um, um, it will just rub into it. So just pat it and then you can melt them. You see, I've done that, melted them. Very clever. It's enough to give us the effect that we want. What I'm going to do now, I decided to use the ochre 182 for a scarf. Now this is clever folks, watch this. That's the front, 
tucked into his jacket. This is on the side. Now what we want to do now is use a bit of grey just in here. So we kind of separate it a little bit. Are you with me? And then just the merest hint of 175 to do the same thing. If you follow me exactly on this, you'll find that'll work. And that little bit of 175 under the chin. Got it? Now this is where it gets really clever. Then you put a little bit of white just on the scarf where it bulges out, goes round the back, goes into there. Now that is stunning. Isn't it? You've got to admit that. Look how small it is. Remind you, this is my little finger. Now we're looking at very tiny areas, but it's great fun and you should really enjoy this now. Little areas that I'm not quite sure about is there. So use your white pencil just to give yourself. Now I'm happy with him. He's, 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 when we come to do the horses and the other things, they will be a little bit more in focus, but he's going to be pressed into the background more. Now the trousers, what I did with the trousers, um, just before I do those trousers, there's something I was going to show you. Um, we've got a rain, it's not a, it's, it, yes it would be a rain wouldn't it, but it's not really. Do you know what folks, I've got to be honest, I don't know what it is. I just found a picture on the internet that gave me all these, all these different bits and bobs. And I used that, now it goes into there and it goes through his hand, so he's holding that as well as all these other things. Let me do these or these as well. This one comes across there. Now I'm going to turn this into a different colour in a minute. But I wanted to put it into... Because I'm going to put his trousers on there. And I've got to decide whether that bar is darker or lighter. And then it goes across there like that. It goes down there like that. Yes, it's got to be darker or lighter. I think it's going to have to be darker there. Let me make that darker. Make that darker. I'm not, no, I'm not sure about colour now. Whether I'm going to make it a colour or like, leave it like that. But that that little touch of 175 curls his head round. I might put a bit of colour on that, but the reason I've done it is because I've got trousers to worry about behind. <coughs> so have you folks. So what we'll do, we'll put his trousers, first of all, it's going to be grey in there. And then we've got brown. I've decided to use the 283 because I wanted to stay. the same colours we've been using. Now see that light area down there? Well we can't have a light area but we have to have one at the moment because what we've got to do now is to make that just a little darker behind. Okay and then we use our colour shaper. This is all clever stuff. Now you may find that this is quite hard for you to do. If you do, well, just do the best you can. I think it's worth worth per persevering with this because it's such a good picture. That's a little bit of green behind his jacket sticking out there. Well, that's his jacket there sticking out. That's, that's, that's not bad. Now we can just put a little bit of light on his trousers. His knee would be pushed forward there, so that's where the light would be, and we'd have a little bit of light going back in there. And he's also got some boots on, which will give him boots as well. Now I've put brown there, uh, because, but I'm going to have to put some dark boots on him. So I'm using 175. That was grey I used then, and then I use 175. And that actually gives him brown well into boots, 
which I think is quite nice and also it does tend to a little bulge there So what do we do about this? Well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it darker. Now what I'm going to do is use 177. The 177 is a darker colour. sharply I'd lose you so I'll have to move myself around. Quite critical now to make that a little darker. That's it. And what we then do is to make the trousers behind just that touch lighter. See that? Using the white pencil. Now we've got him I think this looks good. He looks good. There's Wellington's on me. There's his. Good. Okay, well, I'm pretty happy with him. I think we're going to leave him alone. As I say, it is, when I look at it, his trousers Really, and his wings, wings and need to be faded slightly as I've done here. Just use the end of the pencil just to fade him in. Oh, I think he's good. I don't think we can do much more than that. Let's put a little bit of white up in here, giving separation to the arm. And he's also got a very big arm here, so we'll. Bring down right there. Out of proportion with the other side. That'll do. I might have to return to him at a later date, but I'm quite happy for the moment that that's going as I want it now. This, this, this needs to be. I don't think it needs to be touched at all. <coughs> May have to alter that slightly because that's that's that's. Got a little bit of a nice bit of. That's not supposed to have a kink in it. But now because we've got what we got there, we've also got to now. I'm going to go straight in with one double seven here. As if, otherwise, I think I'm going to have a problem. That goes around there. Now this one, yeah, this is the another one that. Again, we'll do that one. I'll do that one in a minute. That's the one that comes down there. Very complicated. This um, plow. Along there. As I say, I'm using one double seven. You can, and I might well put colour on top of this in a minute. But really, I need to have that quite strong. And then, what do I do about that? Well, that, that will have to be the same colour. We can, what, what we can do now to make that recess slightly, we can go back over the top of it with the light grey. Just in his back, I'm not so sure that needs to be done. Because that really is almost going into, uh, coming out of the mist. But this, this needs to be just weakened slightly. This is with 270. Just weaken it a little bit so it doesn't look quite so strong. And then these... There's a wheel here as well. Let's put that in. Oh, 
Oh, but remember the greys all the way through here. There we are. We're putting that onto the grey. Don't have to be too fussy about that. There are things. These ploughs are funny looking things. I'm just going to wing it, as my son would say. As long as it looks as though it's something mechanical and would work, you'll get away with it. So follow me folks, because the drawing will not give you much more information than I'm giving you here. A little bit of white in here just to put a rim of that wheel in. And you can probably just put bits of because it's an old plough, it's not a modern plough, we're looking at something that looks the part. Like that. I think that looks pretty good. Yes, it looks good to me. Um, oh, there's one more I've just seen here that goes through there. And then there's another wheel that goes somewhere here, somewhere. I'll have to just indicate it. I can't. I don't think I can put it in. There is one. There is one. Actually, I think it goes around there somewhere. Now that's going to be tricky and fun for me because we've got a, 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 a leg to put in. But I'll worry about that when I get to it. I like that. I think that's coming along really well. Let me pull back so that you can see that better because you're really close up now. <laughs> 